Hey guys, welcome back. So today is part three in my little bridal makeup series, a little mini series, um, all about bridal makeup and doing your own bridal makeup. If you haven't seen the previous two parts, definitely make sure you check them out. But in part one, what we did is kind of broke down the makeup and your different options when it comes to your makeup look and also any general tips and tricks I have as a bridal makeup artist and as a previous bride who did my own makeup. And then in part two, I did a different tutorial for a different bridal look. That one wasn't quite as glam as this one. It was more geared towards dry skin type. So it was like a dewy base and we focused on cool tones. Whereas this one is all warm tones. It's more of a matte base, so geared more towards um, oily skin types. And it's a little bit more glam and a little bit more of a smoky eye going on. And the other difference is the first tutorial was a little bit simpler, whereas this one is a little bit more advanced. I'm using just some extra products, some extra brushes, but you can definitely cherry pick from each tutorial as to what would suit you. You can use the colors that I'm using in this tutorial and use them in the way that I'm using in the previous tutorial. So do make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it already. So yeah, if you want to see how to get this warm toned, slightly glam, more full coverage um, bride look, then just keep watching. So to get started, I'm going to prep my eyelid and I'm going to be using an eye primer and what that's going to do is help prevent any creasing of the eyeshadows throughout the day, which is when they gather in the little folds and creases of your eye. And that generally happens due to like the natural oils in your skin coming through and kind of moving the shadows around. And um, so oily skin people tend to be more prone to that. I have very oily skin and oily lids. You might even be able to see the shine coming off my lids. So an eye primer would help control that and keep all the shadows in place. What I'm going to be using is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the shade Eden. So this has a colour to it which will act as a base which is going to cancel out any discoloration and give me a really clean canvas to work on. So it's like a two in one. You could also use a clear primer and then just use a colour base or like a concealer or something over the top. I'm just going to blend that in with a little brush. You could also use your ring finger. And then whatever I have left on the brush I'm just going to run under the eye as well where I'm also going to be um, applying shadow, but also it's gonna help prevent creasing in the little folds under the eye as well, um, with the eyeshadow or concealer or whatever is under there, which if you have little lines and folds under your eye, it's kind of impossible to stop creasing altogether, but these little things do just help. So next I'm just gonna set that primer so it's not so tacky and the shadows don't stick to it. Some people like to leave their primer um, tacky because it will pick up um, more pigment in the shadow and make them more vibrant whereas I'm more concerned about having it nice and smooth and allowing me to blend really easily. So to do that you could use an eyeshadow that's similar to your skin tone and um, sometimes I'd use like a creamy kind of an eyeshadow colour but lately I've been using um, just my face powder. So this is a MAC Studio Fix powder and I'm just buffing that all over with a blending brush. So that's just making sure that it's all even, there's no one area that's a little bit tacky and would make my eyeshadow go patchy and it just makes it really even and smooth so again we have a lovely clean canvas time to start our colours on. So for eyeshadows I'm going to be using a selection of Inglot eyeshadows here just all warm tones that I want to use. So if you saw the first tutorial which was a little bit more um, like simple we had I think it was four um, eyeshadow colours and then a black just for the liner whereas we have six eyeshadow colours and then a black to smoke out what will be a gel liner. But if you want to use these warmer colours but in a more simplified way like in the first tutorial, what you could do is just use um, your transition, either of these as a crease depending on how dark and smoky you want it, the gold as your lid colour and then the champagne as your little highlight colour. So it would just be more like this or like this if you wanted a smokier option in the crease. So to start us off I'm using a nice fluffy rounded blending brush. So it's the same shape all around and it's just nice and fluffy and big. And I'm going into the peach transition color. So this is going to be the highest color and the lightest shade above the crease. So it's used to blend out the edges of all these crease colors. So if I look straight into a mirror with my eyes relaxed, I wanna make sure that it's above that crease line, that fold line. So I'm not going right up to the brow touching it, but just under it, nice and high. Um, or as high as you have room for. And also if you don't have um, a, like a lot of crease space, you could definitely use a smaller um, brush. A brush this size could just simply be too big for the space you have. So if you need something smaller, then you can work with something smaller. And like in the previous tutorial, I'm starting on the outer corner and blending it inwards because the focus of our color is on the outside of the eye. And wherever I put my brush down first, that's where most of the color is gonna be deposited. So I'm starting there and then blending it all the way in to the inner corner, so it's sitting above my crease all the way across. I also like to extend my shadow out beyond the eye a little bit just to elongate my eye shape. So you can also do that just with a really light hand, extending that out. 
Now, while I'm here with my peach color and my big fluffy brush, I'm actually gonna do a little step that isn't to do with the eyeshadow and it's one of those little optional um, extra steps, but it is something that I like to do. So something that some people and some makeup artists like to do is color correct under the eye. So before your concealer, you might put like a salmon color that would cancel out any blue or purple undertones under the eye. For me personally, that color corrector has to be very thin in consistency because I just find for my eyes, sometimes two layers of product can be a little bit thick and can crease quite a lot under the eye for me. So what I like to do for myself and um, on clients is take a bit of peach eyeshadow and use that um, on the areas where any like blueness or purpleness is coming through under the eye. So that would be right in this area and also up into this corner here, up against the nose. A lot of the times the darkness will carry on up there. So I basically use a peach eyeshadow as my color corrector for my under eyes. So I'm just doing that while I'm here with this step with the peach um, eyeshadow. And you just wanna place that where those blue and purple tones are because otherwise it's not cancel anything out and it's just gonna sit as peach or orange on your skin and it might even show through under your concealer, etc. So I don't know if you can see on camera, but that has just warmed up that area. And that means that when I go in with my concealer, there's less for my concealer to cover. But yet it's not like a second layer of cream like it would be with a regular cream color corrector. So that's just a little extra bonus tip if you have dark circles and if you have a peach eyeshadow. So back to the eye makeup, we're now gonna move on to our crease color. So first we had the peach as a transition. Now our first crease color is gonna be this like dark, um, rusty, orangey, mustardy color. And again, I'm starting on the outer corner of the eye. And I'm blending it in about halfway. And while I'm blending, I'm not just swiping back and forth. I'm doing little circles as I'm moving in and the same as I'm moving out. I'm just switching the direction of the circles. And that goes for the way I was applying the um, peach transition as well, I should have said, to make sure you're using circles. And if you are newer to blending, I would give you two tips. Number one, make sure you're not blending with your arm. So when we're doing circles and moving across the lid, we're not doing it like this with our arm. It's all in just the fingers and the wrist. So you don't need to give yourself a workout when you're blending. Your arm is staying still, and literally the circles are just coming from my fingers. I don't know if you can see that just coming from my fingers, but my wrist is then moving my hand across and that's gonna give you more precision. And the second tip would be to make sure that you're not holding your brush too near the tip. When I'm doing the blending here, I'm holding it about three quarters of the way back because the further you hold your brush back, the looser it is and the more control you're giving to the brush rather than having too much control in your arm. If I held it up here, I'd have way too much control and that would be too stiff of a movement and I nearly would have to use my arm. Whereas if I hold it all the way back here, it's just loosey goosey and the brush is doing all the work for me. So if you are having difficulty with blending, I would just make sure of those two things that you're not using your arm too much and that you are holding your brush back that little bit more. And then while we have that crease color, I'm also just gonna take a little bit under the eye and you could switch to a smaller brush for that, um, but I don't mind it coming down that bit lower because as you can see, we're gonna be going in even tighter with some darker colors. So we're basically doing the opposite to what's on top, going from light to dark this way and then going from light to dark this way. So now for our second crease color, I am going to switch to a smaller blending brush. So what I was using was a fluffy rounded blending brush like this. It's the same shape all the way around. Um, and by the way, this is a Crown C441. And a lot of brands do those. And um, for example, the Blank Canvas E25 and the Blank Canvas E20. And um, they're just slightly kind of different lengths. But I'm now switching something a little bit smaller than the first one. But that depends on what brushes you have available. Just if you have the option, I would probably switch to something a little bit more smaller for the darker shade. Um, and the kind of brush this is, is a pinched ferrule blending brush, which if you saw the first tutorial, we basically did all of the eyeshadow with this kind of a brush. So it's the blending brush that is pinched in at the metal ferrule here, which gives it a slightly flatter shape and therefore it's that little bit thinner on top. So I'm now going into that dark brown shade. So we're just coming down that little bit lower than the last color. So our peach was the highest, then the first crease color, and now the second crease color. And this really is falling into that fold area, but just being blended up a little bit higher as well with our circles. So again, starting on the outer corner with my little circles and just blending it inwards. Um, just coming about halfway across the crease and we're just making sure with our circles that we're not having a line of brown, that it's just softly diffusing into those warmer, more kind of orangey shades. Now there is one tiny little spot where the shadow does not want to stick and I think it's because I spritzed my skin with some um, primer water after I prepped the eye because my skin was feeling a little bit um, dehydrated. I think a little dot of that has just settled on my eyeshadow and set there. So just if you're able to see that on camera, I am aware. 
and then I'm just taking a little bit of that and coming down onto the actual lid just on the outer corner because ultimately, um, if you can see on this side, we do want to have that nice dark outer corner here and it's going to kind of blend in with the smoky liner. So we're just bringing it down onto the actual eyelid and then I'm just feathering out the edges so that there's no harsh lines. And then just another little extra step and um, because I know that that brown is going to be fading into golds, just to help prep that little fade, I'm taking some of the first crease shade and just dusting that on the inside of that brown to already start a bit of a gradient from dark to light. And that's just that little bit easier for those kind of gold and bronzy colors to blend into. So that's not a totally necessary step, but it is just one of those little things that I would genuinely do. Okay, so now we will start on these shimmery colors on the eye and we're gonna start on the inner corner and work our way across. So now I'm putting down the blending brushes and moving to a flat brush, a flat standard shadow brush like that. And we're gonna start with this champagne highlight shade. I'm just popping that in the inner corner. So just around the tear duct area, just give a little dust of that brush off and move into the gold. And that's just going on the inner third of my lid, right next to that champagne color. And I'm just kind of wiggling it back and forth to blend in with that lighter color. And then what I'll do is just flip the brush over and use the other side for the bronze and that's going to bridge the gap between the gold and our brown shade. So again if you wanted to do a simpler version you don't have to use the bronze you could just go across with the gold it's just an option to help the gradient from light to dark and then I'm just taking one of my blending brushes and just going around the edges just to make sure there's no harsh lines coming into the crease or anything. So then finally, just before I move on to liner, I'm going to take a little small um, pencil brush or bullet brush like this. Any little small brush you have um, will do the job. And I'm taking that darker brown and I'm running this on my lower lash line. So I'm coming up under my lower lashes, starting on the outside and just running that along the roots of the lashes. And I'm coming in kind of three quarters of the way. Again, just to keep most of the color on the outside here. So it just gives some definition under the eye to balance out the liner that we're going to have on the top of the eye. And just make sure again that it's nice and soft and blended and no harsh lines. If by chance you have gone in with too heavy a hand or too much product, you can go back in with your blending brush and like your peach or the kind of the, the rusty shade and just go underneath and help buff that out. So now moving on to the eyeliner. Again, if you want a simpler version, you can revert to the first tutorial for a softer and easier liner look. Um, but what I'm going to do is use a gel liner so this is the Inglat gel in number 77 which is their black and a little straight liner brush this is um also Inglat the 23t but any um straight liner brush like that or even a little angled brush a lot of people like to use angled brushes um for their liner so i'm picking up some of that from the jar and then i like just to use the lid um just to remove any excess and kind of flatten out the brush and this is my own eyeliner it's not from my kit so i can just dip in and use as i need to and so I'm basically just going to use that to line the top lash line and you want to keep the inside nice and thin and the outside can be a bit thicker. It just gives like a slightly lifted illusion. So what I like to do is start from the middle, do the outside, that slightly thicker side and then go back into the inner half and do that nice and thin um, a little bit more carefully. So that is our eyeliner on and you might be able to see the difference from this side to this side because we will be slightly smoking it with some black eyeshadow but you do have the option of leaving it like this but I just wanted to show you the difference so you can see the two um, different styles. So for this I'm going to be using a little angled brush. I'm not actually sure where this one is from but any little angled brush or flat top brush should do and I'm going into a matte black shadow. I'm basically going to be going over that liner and just like a millimeter above, not way above, but it just diffuses that clean line on the top. So the benefit of doing this is number one, it just gives that different look if you like that kind of softer, more smoky liner look. But also if you're not super good at um, getting a clean line with your gel, this will help um, cover that up basically and just make it a lot more forgiving. 
Now I would say if you are choosing to just leave it as the gel with no shadow, you might wanna do a little bit of smoking and a little bit of smudging just on the corner here. So it doesn't end in such an abrupt end that you can kind of just fade it out a little bit with some shadow. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna slightly flick upwards with my brush so that that black starts to blend with the dark brown. So that is the liner just slightly softened out with the shadow. Again, it's still nice and black because we have that gel there. So it's still strong and defined, but the top line of it isn't so stark. And then just to join it a little bit with the lower lash line, I'm just gonna barely touch into the black with that little um, pencil brush for like the tiniest little bit of black on it. I don't want too much at all. And just add that to the very outer corner of the lower lash line, just so that there's a little bit of a connect here. And again, that's just a little optional step. So then I'm just gonna curl my lashes and I'll apply some mascara. So on two lashes, I magically have one side on already. I just did that off camera and you can see the difference that lashes give. So again, you have that option of going um, without lashes, just going with a more natural set. Again, because this is airing a little bit on the more glam side of things, I have gone for a slightly fuller um, set of lashes. Not totally thick and dramatic, but also not too um, natural. So I already have this one glued. It's pretty much ready to pop on. I'm um, just using my little squeezy tube of glue, which I did in the first tutorial. Just applied a little bit to the band of the lash. And then the key is wait until it's getting tacky. So wait until it starts drying, which it has begun to do. And then just using my tweezers, I'm gonna pop that down in the middle and then stick my corners down. Being careful to keep them, and try not to blink while I'm doing it. And um, being careful to keep them as close as I can to my actual lash, lash roots. And yeah, that's it. But again, the style of lashes that you choose um, do really impact the overall look. If you liked the eyeshadow but want something much more subtle, you could go for just little individual clusters if you're able to put them on yourself. Or you can also just do a little corner lash like we did in the last tutorial. But this is just giving us more glam, smoky eye vibes. Um, so that completes the eye look. So onto the skin. So we're gonna be doing a matte base in today's look, which is geared um, a little bit more towards oily skin. But if you have dry skin and you still wanna do more of a matte foundation rather than something dewy, you can just switch out your primer to something more moisturizing um, like we did in the previous tutorial and then just do like a light powdering on top. But for my oily skin peeps out there like me, um, one of my favorite primers for mattifying is the Kiko Matte Face Base. It's like kind of a clear um, gel texture. And as you would expect, it's mattifying, but it's not super um, like thick or too drying. So my preferred kind of foundation brush then is more of a round topped um, kabuki buffing style brush as opposed to a flat painting style foundation brush. So I'm going to apply that primer with my brush. You could also do it with um, your hands if you prefer it. And I get very oily um, all over pretty much. So I am buffing this all over. If you only get oily in your T-zone, you can just apply it there. Okay, now again, for another little optional tip, um, and this is more for if you're really oily like me um, and struggle to keep your oils under control, I'm going to then set that primer with a little bit of powder. Now we don't want too much because we are gonna be going over top with our liquid foundation and we don't want it to be too hard to blend, but just a light dusting to give us an extra little barrier um, of protection. So you can use whatever um, setting powder you have. I'm just taking a little bit of a loose um, powder. This is the Kat Von D Locket Powder. I'm just picking up a little bit. And I'm just going to dust over my T-zone. And then whatever's left over the rest. So for the foundation then, if you have something that's tried and true and works for you, then go ahead and use that. Um, but if you would like some recommendations for oily skin, uh, these foundations have more of that like matte finish. So the first one I have here is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation. And this would be more um, of a medium coverage. If you don't like anything um, too full coverage or too heavy, then that is one to try. Um, then I have this one here, which is a classic, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. And for me, this um, kind of starts at a medium, but it's very buildable and um, you can get it up to a full coverage. But because it's more of like a liquidy consistency, you do have that range with it. You can just apply a very sheer layer and get more medium coverage, or you can layer it up and get more full. Um, and this does have SPF 10 in it, I have heard some people say that they get a bit of flashback with it, 
Personally, I haven't had any flashback with it and I haven't had, it, had any um, brides have any flashback with it. So if you want, you can just maybe get a sample of it first and just test it in some um, flash photography. And if you aren't sure what flashback is, it's basically when um, your foundation will say matches you when you look in the mirror and then you go out on a night out and someone takes a flash picture and suddenly when you see it, you have a white ghostly face. That is because there's an ingredient in one of your products that is flashing back and it's reflecting um, that flash from the camera. And when a product has SPF, that can happen. But because this is so low, it's just SPF 10. As I say, I haven't experienced that with this product. But definitely look out for that if your foundation does have SPF in or if your powder does, etc. And other ingredients to look out for with that would be um, titanium dioxide and silica and sometimes mica. But you can also Google and research that as well if you're concerned about any of your products or if you feel like one of your products is doing that and figuring out which one it is. The next one I have is the Morphe Fluidity Foundation. And I find that this is more of a straight full coverage foundation. It's not as thin and liquidy as like the Double Wear or the Peach Perfect, um, but it's also not like a thick cream. It's somewhere in the middle and it is um, a full coverage foundation and a matte finish. And then the last one I have would be more like extreme full coverage if you are trying to cover like acne or really pigmented scarring and stuff, or if you just like a really full coverage base. So this one is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover. So this is the fuller coverage version of the um, Estee Lauder Double Wear. So it is a thicker um, consistency. It's more of like um, a cream formula. And as it says in the tin, it's a maximum coverage. And I would say it dries down to like a semi-matte. It's not like a total um, powder matte finish, but more of like a semi-matte. And the last one is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation. Again, it's a very full coverage foundation, um, but it is thicker. It is um, more of like a thick cream consistency, but it does have a really good shade range. That's the only thing about the um, Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover Foundation that I don't like is the shade range um, is quite limited, whereas you have a lot more options with the Faux Filter. Um, and then the other, one other thing I would say about this is that if you're anyway uh, sensitive to fragrance, that I would avoid this one because it does have a strong fragrance, which I know some people really don't like about it. I don't mind it. I'm not that sensitive to it, but I did just want to mention that if you are. So I think today I'm going to go in with the Morphe one. So I'm just buffing that into the skin, just making sure that there's nothing um, that's just sitting on top of the skin and that it's all buffed in evenly and I'm not missing any little areas. And I tend to go in with a lighter hand um, around any areas that I get a bit of creasing just so that there's less product there to crease. So for example, around my smile lines and as I'm doing my forehead, I just apply it a little bit and then I'm really spreading that out so that it's just a thinner layer across my forehead because I do get creases in my like expression lines. It just depends on your face where you get um, little creases or folds and how much you move those areas. So just another little tip, if you find you get creasing of your foundation, I'm just gonna bring that down my neck as well. Um, our neck tends to be the area that doesn't get any sun because it's like sheltered by your chin. And then for concealer, um, I quite like the Tarte Shape Tape, which I forgot to pull out. Um, that's a nice, again, matte concealer. But one that I've been really liking lately is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I just find it's so great um, for minimizing the amount of creasing that I get under the eye. And I'm using a concealer that's a couple of shades lighter than my foundation so that I can also highlight with it. Um, again, I do have little lines and folds under my eye. And if you also have those, then it's kind of unavoidable that your concealer will just settle in those areas a little bit. But some concealers do it more than others. And I find that it does it a lot less with this concealer. So I'm applying that under the eye around the dark circle area and then also blending it down onto the cheek and up slightly onto the cheekbone so that we're highlighting that area as well. And then I'm gonna highlight the center of the face as well. Again, you might've seen this in the last tutorial, but it's basically just bringing light to certain areas of the face. and drawing the eye into the center. So then going back to my foundation brush and blending out the center first. And the reason I do this is to let the concealer under my eyes set a little bit more, like a few seconds more, um, so that it's not gonna move around so much when I blend it out. Therefore, it's gonna stay put and give me more coverage. So I'm first just blending out the point where it's meeting the foundation, making sure that that's a really seamless blend. And then to blend the top edge of it where it's meeting the foundation, I'm taking a little fluffy and um, blending concealer brush with synthetic hairs. And just blending that, you could also just use a little eyeshadow brush, something that's just smaller, 
just to blend out that top edge of it. So now we're gonna set all of that in place with a powder. So if you are happy with the coverage of your foundation so far, you could just use a translucent powder. So something like um, even a loose powder, like the Kat Von D Locket, or a pressed um, translucent powder, like even the um, Rimmel Stay Matte powder is a nice affordable option. But for me personally, even though this is already a full coverage foundation, I just love having the most coverage that I can possibly have without having the thickest foundation or like 30 layers of foundation. So I do like to go over top with a um, powder foundation as my setting powder. Now, if you aren't familiar with powder foundations, they're basically what they say on the tin. They're a powder that's also a foundation, um, but they wouldn't have as much coverage as a liquid foundation. They would definitely be on the sheer side of things. So it's not like adding another layer of a liquid foundation. It's just like adding an extra little layer of coverage. And the handy thing about using a powder with coverage to it is that you can kind of color adjust with them. So for example, if I found that I was like a little bit dark, I could use one that's lighter and just tone the color down. Or if I was too light, I could use a powder that's a bit darker and bring the color up. So that's another bonus of using a powder that has a color or coverage to it. But personally for me, it's more about the coverage just because my skin is very acne prone and I have a lot of like um, very pigmented scarring that do have a tendency of showing through throughout the day. A powder foundation for me is just like a little security blanket. So two that I like to use is the MAC um, Studio Fix Powder Foundation and the Urban Decay Stay Naked The Fix. The only thing I would say about the MAC Studio Fix if you also have this and if you're using this because I know a lot of people like to use this powder is that it does have SPF in it so you might want to be a little bit more light-handed with it or just double check it in um, like a flash picture. It kind of depends on your skin and the products that you're using under it as to how much of that is really getting soaked up and how much of that is going to sit on top of your skin and flash back. So I'm just going to go in with a big powder brush. This is a blank canvas F25 and set all over. I'm just pressing on top so as not to um, move the foundation underneath. And I'm making sure to really set in those areas that tend to crease. And then just before I go right under the eyes, I'm just gonna check that nothing has creased already, which it hasn't. And the reason it hasn't is probably because, um, number one, we brought a little bit of eyeshadow primer under there to begin with. Number two, we have a light layer of eyeshadow running underneath, which isn't gonna crease as easily as like a creamy concealer. So my concealer is only just about reaching those folds because we brought our eyeshadow down underneath. So that is a handy tip if you struggle with creasing under your eyes. If your shadow is coming low enough, that you don't have to bring your concealer up that high. That won't crease half as much as your concealer would. And we also brought that peachy eyeshadow down very low. So that's just that extra little barrier of powder. And again, I'm using a concealer that works for me and doesn't tend to crease too much on me. So now that I've checked that, I can bring my powder right up. I'm just gonna switch to a slightly smaller brush because I'm using um, a big fluffy brush. And then just to let you know what I'm doing, I'm just dipping into a um, lighter shade than I was using for the rest of my face. So that's why I have the two of these out. So I have two different colors. So I'm just using a lighter shade and that's just making sure that the brightness that we brought with the concealer isn't getting totally covered up by the powder foundation. Just keeping things nice and bright and that smaller brush allows me to get right up close under the eye. Again, an optional step. So before we move on to the cheeks, we're gonna fill in the brows. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a brown eyeshadow. I'm using a MAC eyeshadow in the shade Brun. And the brush I'm using is the Inglat 31T. And um, the reason I like this brush in particular for doing defined brows is that it's so thin. So it means I can get a really crisp line with it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little spoolie and brush the hairs up. And then with a very clean line, I'm going to outline the shape underneath. I find the key with getting a clean um, shape to your brow is to keep that line as smooth as you can so there's no like dip up which can often happen with a brow shape where it's a lot thicker down here and then it suddenly gets very thin so you want it to just gradually arch upwards and then at the tail of the brow i just extend it out a little bit further so then once we have the outline underneath i'm going to brush the hairs down and outline the top so by outlining the underneath and the top, it's giving us a really defined shape, which is what we're going for with this brow look. But if you prefer to have a much softer look, you can do something like a brow that we did in the previous tutorial, or you could even just outline the underneath and leave the top fluffy, which is a lovely look as well. And then when I'm outlining the top, I'm not gonna start all the way in here because that would give a very blocky look in the front. I'm just gonna come in like a centimeter. So I find on the top, the arch generally needs to be built out a little bit more. But 
you can see what um, your brow needs. And then I just bring it down to meet that line that I had extended out. And I like to keep the tail of my brow nice and thin and sharp so it comes to a fine point. But again, if you want a more natural effect, you don't need to worry about that. So then that is the top and bottom outlined. And all we have to do is colour in. So I'm going to start from back here and just basically fill in the gaps. And then again, as I get to the front, I don't want it to be too heavy and too blocky. So I'm just using a light hand and just flicking and feathering a little bit of colour through there. And then what I like to do is just brush the hairs up again, just to see if there's any little areas that I missed, which generally that will show up. And then brush all of that product through. If you find that the lines you've done on the bottom and the top are a little bit too harsh, running a spoolie over them will take away some of that product and just soften them. So I'll normally do that on the top a little bit just to soften the line. So what you end up with is a very defined shape. And if you found that you've gone too thick or anything, it's all fixable with makeup. So you can just take a little brush, like um, a lip brush or even just a little angle brush and some of your foundation or concealer and just come around and remove anything that's excess or anything that you don't want. So never panic with makeup, it comes off, it's all fixable. So I'm just gonna do the same on the other side and I'll be right back. So now that the brows are on and we're gonna finish off the face and we're gonna start with bronzer and I'm gonna use the Isadora bronzing powder in the shade 05 matte tan today. So this is gonna be my bronzer and then I'm gonna go in with a contour and I'm going to use the Inglot Sculpt in the shade 509. And the difference between a bronzer and a contour generally is that your bronzer is going to be warmer and your contour is going to be cooler. So you can see the difference in the colouring there. It's not just that one is darker than the other. They're two different kind of colours. This one has more of a grey undertone because it's going to be portraying more of a shadow. You're going to be sculpting up the face with it. Whereas the bronzer is adding more of a colour to the skin, more of a little bit of a, like a tan. So I'm going to start with the bronzer and a larger fluffy a face brush. Once again, in the last tutorial, we did a more simplified version where we just did bronzer and we did all of our face products with one brush. But today I'm using, um, this is a Crown BK26. I'm not even sure if they still do it anymore. And um, with something that's big and kind of loose. I'm not using the one that I used for my face powder because this one is more um, dense. So it packs on more color, which is good for what I wanted for the um, powder foundation. But for the bronzer, I'm using something more loose. Um, and I kind of treat a bronzer, when I'm using like a bronzer and a contour, I treat it like a transition colour for my contour. So like we have the transition colour in our eyeshadow, it's going to be something that's going to help the contour to blend out. And by having multiple shades, it's going to add more dimension. So rather than having like just one shade through your crease, having like a few different shades of um, browns or peaches or oranges or whatever it is, it gives more dimension and it makes the whole thing look more blended. So once again, it's one of those optional steps, um, but it just helps give a more polished effect. So I'm hitting under and just slightly on the cheekbone because this is a bronzer, it can come up that bit higher on the cheekbone. Um, I'm hitting around the hairline I'm just doing a little dusting under the cheekbone, but that's going to be more of my contour. So it's just giving me a little bit more color and a little bit more dimension. So I'm not all one flat shade. And because this is like the transition color for the contour, I can do bigger circles. So it's like with the peach color up here, I could bring that up much higher. And then we were more precise as we got darker. So I'm doing quite big circles. It's coming down that little bit lower on my forehead. Um, as I say, it can come up onto the cheekbone a little bit more. And then just a little bit under the jawline and if you want you can bring a little bit down the neck if you need to add some more color there so then i'm going to switch to um something that's a little bit smaller and more precise where i can use more of the tip of the brush this is a morphe e3 and i'm dipping into my contour shade and now my circles aren't going to be so big and obviously the brush isn't as big so i'm being that little bit more precise because i'm sculpting with the face now so for under the cheekbone it's not going to come up onto the cheekbone as high and I like to use a mix of back and forth motions to get in that placement and cut out the cheekbone, but also use circles so that I'm not ending up with just a stripe. Come up around the hairline as well. But again, it's just not gonna come down as far as the bronzer did. It's just that little bit tighter. And where you add more or less of your contour will depend on your face shape too. Like if you have a smaller forehead and you don't wanna try and make it any smaller, you don't need to do this. Whereas I am trying to bring down the hairline a little bit. 
with illusion and trickery. And then I'm also gonna use that just to try and get rid of some of the double chin action under here. So right under the jawline, we're just gonna create a little fake shadow. What I like to do then is just take a small amount of that powder or even if I'm being very high maintenance, I'll dip into like a slightly lighter contour powder. I'm just gonna give my brush a squeeze just to narrow it, dipping into the contour ever so lightly. And actually I'll just dust off some of that excess. I just find with nose contouring, um, less is more. So just the tiniest little bit goes a long way I find. It can start to look um, quite strange if there's too much. And then just a little bit around the tip. So what I'm doing here is basically marking in a new side to my nose. So rather than doing a line where my nose actually meets my cheek down here, I'm bringing that little shadow up and it's creating the illusion of a slimmer nose. So obviously if you already have a very slim nose, you don't want to do this. And then I'm just taking my powder brush and pressing over the top just to make sure it's all blended. Again, I just like it to be really soft. I think the lighting is making it look, yeah, a little bit crooked, but it's fine in person, trust me. <laughs> so then for a blush to go with the warm tones that we're doing, we're gonna do a warmer blush, so a more peachy undertone, rather than the cool tones that we had previously did with more of a pink undertone. So a very muted, soft, um, warm blush is my kind of blush. That's the kind of blush that I use all the time. Um, so I have a few recommendations. So for example, something like, like this is a very affordable one, the MUA Makeup Academy Blushed Matte Blush Powder in the shade Papaya Whip. This one I actually picked up in pennies and I really like it. It's the PS um, Blusher in Nude Illusion. So just like kind of a bronzy peachy shade. Sleek have a shade called Suede. Actually, I don't know if they still do it, but that's another one that I really like. And then the one that I'm going to use today is the Inglot Freedom Blush in number 21. So I'm picking that up not on the tip of the brush and not on the total side of it, but kind of on the corner, on the angle, just to give me um, a larger space. I'm just gonna tap off the excess into my hand because if I went in with the tip, it would be too concentrated and too small an area. So I'm gonna start in the apple of the cheek, which is like the fullest part of your cheek when you smile. So like that. Start feathering it on and blending it back just above the bronzer and the contour. So with the bronzer and the contour, we started at the back of the face and we were blending that forward. Whereas with the blush, we're starting at the front of the face and blending that back. I know some people do like to skip blush if they have bronzer on, if they feel like they already have color on their face, but I feel like it does add a very different kind of color and in a very different placement. It just stops the front of your cheeks and the front of your face looking so blank. So for a highlight, I've pulled out some of my favorites um, because this is a little bit more of a glam um, makeup look. And if you couldn't tell, this is a very me look. It's very similar, if not what I did for my own wedding. So first here I have the Becca um, Champagne Pop highlight, which was the collaboration with Jaclyn Hill. And that has a very warm um, goldy undertone. I also love the Ofra highlight in Rodeo Drive. Again, with a warm golden undertone, but just a little bit lighter than the Champagne Pop. And then I have the Mary Luminizer from The Balm. My one is slightly broken. So it's a little bit lighter again, but it still has a slightly um, warmer golden undertone. There's nothing in it that's very pink or neutral, but it is lighter than the other two. But what I love about this one is the texture of it. Even though it's a powder, it sits very creamy on the skin. And while it is a strong beaming highlight like the other two, it doesn't really pick up um, very like sparkly looking or anything. So that's the one I'm gonna go with today. And I'm gonna go in with my blank canvas F28. So using a smaller brush like this is gonna give me more precision and it's gonna give me more of a concentrated application to make that highlight that little bit stronger. So I'm starting on the top of the cheekbone at the back and then blending that forward and also then blending it, whatever's left on the brush, just up onto the temple a little bit, just to avoid when the light hits it, to avoid too much of a, like a stripe so that when the light hits, it actually creates a little bit of a halo um, around the temple. Now I also like to just do a little bit on the cupid's bow and a tiny little bit on the tip of the nose, but it just depends what you like. And then whatever's left on the brush, I'll just take above the brow arch. So that is the face done. And now that we have all of those powders on, I do want to just use a little bit of setting spray to help settle those powders into the skin so they're not sitting on top. So the one that I'm using is the Urban Decay D Slick, which is made for all your skin types. And um, I also really like the Smashbox Primer Water, lovely for drier skin types or even normal skin types. And then I also love the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray, but I can't find it, I don't know where it's gone. So I'm going to use the D Slick. I'm just going to slightly shield my shadow and 
just fan that dry. So it's just boosting a little bit more moisture back into the skin and as I say, helps settle all those powders, especially again, if you're not as oily as me. So that brings us on to the lips. Now again, because we're working with warm tones, we're gonna to go for a more of like a brownie nude rather than like the pinky nude. So I'm gonna start by lining my lips um, and a brown nude lip or a warm nude lip is very my jam. So I have a number of options here for liners and lipsticks. Um, so for the liners, I have a few um, browns. This is the Kiko 533 Smart Fusion Liner. I have the Sephora number 17 Light Brown Liner the Inglash number 63 liner and Collection Cosmetics, um, I think it's number 10 chocolate. So I have those four browns. I think on my actual wedding day, I wore the Sephora one. So I think I'll go with that one for today. So I'm just gonna outline my lips with this and depending on your lip shape or what kind of a look you want, you can slightly overdraw in certain areas or all over. Um, but again, like a little bit makes a huge difference. So you're just talking like a millimeter, see how it looks. And if you want to go more, you can. So once I have that drawn around the edges, I like to just feather in the corners. And that just gives a little bit of contouring to the lip and it pushes the center forward because it's gonna be like a shade lighter. So as I say, I have a few options then for lip colors. One of my all time favorites, um, and it's actually down to a little nub, is the Rimmel and Kate Moss lipstick in number 03. And this is more of like a pinky kind of a brown. And I actually already have a backup of that. It's, as I say, one of my all time favorites. This one is, oh, this one is actually, I don't think you can get this anymore, but I'll just show you. This is the Jamie Genevieve MAC um, lipstick. So that's like a real um, nude with a brown undertone, but something that's actually very similar to that, but just slightly more peachy is the MAC um, Peach Stock. So that is more of a peachy brown nude. And then this is the Rimmel and Kate um, from the nude collection. So it's like in the peachy kind of um, packaging. This is number 43 and that's actually quite similar to Peach Stock. Again, it's more of like a peachy brown nude, um, but obviously more affordable than MAC. And then these two again are still warm nudes, but just with a little bit more color this is MAC Kinda Sexy. So it has more color to it, but it's still like a more of a natural color. And then finally, I have Luna by Lisa um, Coco Shell. So again, a deeper nude with more depth to it. And this would be more on the kind of ready or brown lines. Now, if I remember correctly from my wedding day, I actually did a mix of the um, Jamie Genevieve one, which was the real um, beigey nude, and the Rimmel 03, which was the slightly um, pinky brown. But for today, I'll switch it up. And I'll go in with the um, Rimmel and Kate Moss number 43. So that is that warm, brownie, kind of peachy nude. And that finishes the look. So guys, that completes this slightly more glam bridal look using warm tones and a matte base. Um, I hope you really like it. If you did, please give this video a like and a subscribe if you want to. And if you have any questions at all about um, this tutorial, the last tutorial, um, bridal makeup in general, definitely pop me a message. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm at ChristinaOCMUA. Or you can also just leave it down in the comments. And I'll be happy to be of any help that I can to you. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again. Bye. Piss off, bird.